All great cities build monuments to the people who, or the events which, define them. In Calgary, it was neither a person nor an event which made the city what it is today, but a reptile. Meet Dinny, the mascot of the Calgary Zoo, and the secret behind Calgary's success. Many Calgary youngsters remember sitting on Dinny's tail and climbing up his back. Built from scrap metal and concrete in 1937, Dinny the dinosaur reminds us of the many giant creatures like him who, in life, roamed the Great Plains of Alberta millions of years ago, and in death became one of the largest oil and natural gas fields in the world. Jim Gray remembers those heady days of the 1970s, when the only word to describe the Calgary skyline and the price of oil was up. Well, the 70s were a time of huge growth in this in this province. It, you, the, the word used to be, hey, I wonder what this city's going to be like when they get it unpacked. Uh, because there were, there were cranes all over, um, people were doing silly things because you could make decisions that weren't commercial decisions, weren't technical decisions, but you'd get bailed out with higher prices. But it was at that point in the early 80s, I believe it was, that there were 36 construction cranes uh, in the downtown area, indicating 36 huge buildings going up, and the construction crane became known as the Calgary Bird. You know, <laughs> and <laughs> it fit. People who have only known Calgary as a city will never know what Calgary was like as a town. Not that long ago, Calgary had no skyline to speak of, and the phrase Cowtown really fit. Vernetta Anderson remembers milk was still delivered by horse cart downtown when she moved here in 1952, and remembers looking at a house for sale in Montgomery that didn't have any indoor plumbing. And we looked through all the house, and Nathan the fellow opened the, the door to the bathroom, said, this is the bathroom. And there was this can sitting there, big can with the seat on like a toilet. But I could see there was no plumbing. And, uh, and I said, well, what about the plumbing? He says, well, there isn't any. There's a wagon that comes through. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was a rude awakening. I remember the days when I was a youngster with a a paper route in Calgary with about maybe 40 newspapers to deliver. It covered a vast area of, uh, of Hillhurst to get rid of my 40 papers. Now, of course, the city goes miles beyond where that paper route was. In 1977, the Husky Tower, now called the Calgary Tower, was a landmark on the city's skyline. Today, even taller landmarks cast their shadows across it. The oil boom not only caused Calgary to grow up, but out. The community of Windsor Park was annexed in 1951, the Meadows in 1952, Meadowlark Park in 1954, Forest Lawn in 1961, Montgomery in 1963, and Bowness in 1964. In the next few years, more than 50,000 new housing units will spring up across the city, half again as many as were built 10 years ago. A child born in Calgary today can expect to be one of 1.4 million people here by the time he or she graduates from university. It doesn't get much better than today. And uh, that's, that's good and that's scary. Uh, it's, it's good in that uh, in, in, in the good days you've got to put the seed corn away and you've got to have the good years to carry you through the whole cycle. It's a little scary because a number of people haven't experienced the difficult periods and so when I hear them and I hear them from time to time say well it's good this time and we say yes but it's a cyclical business they say no no it's different this time well when I hear that I always get a little worried because characteristically our businesses are cyclical and so while it is good now and uh, we should be nevertheless disciplined uh, to uh, expect and prepare ourselves for the rainy days Alberta's dinosaur legacy is still honored at the Calgary Zoo, where the suspension bridge takes you back in time to when dinosaurs roamed the prairies of Alberta. Dinny remains as the last surviving dinosaur from the zoo's original prehistoric park. He was declared an Alberta historical resource and fenced off in 1987. Saplings planted near him have now grown strong and tall, as has the city on the plains. <laughs>